Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Morbid Mansion Theater, where there's more cheese than a Green Bay Packers football game. <laughs> and as always, I am your sarcastic specter, the one and only Mr. Malto. Tonight, once again, I bring you... Are you freaking kidding me? Hello. No, I'm not interested. That you are responding to get to that production on your existing production. Look, I'm trying to film here. Right, because here I can see that you have an on-time... You know what? Lost the connection. <laughs> there must have been a power surge. <laughs> so much for being on the no-call list. Okay, back to the beginning. Ain't nobody got time for that. We start tonight's festivities with Chapter 4 of the Crimson Ghost, entitled, The Laughing Skull. <laughs> I didn't ask for this. Well, you're getting it anyway. And then, for our second feature... Hey, fool! You ready for another beating? You should've never came back! I know, right? The 1960 horror movie, The Playgirls and the Vampire. My advice to you, start drinking heavily. It might help. So with that, grab your favorite beverage, grab a snack, turn out the lights, and enjoy the Crimson Ghost. a supply of heavy water with which to operate the cyclotron. 
That's very fortunate. In criminal hands, the cyclotrode would be a terrible weapon, capable of paralyzing the industry of the entire country. Yes, but the Crimson Ghost still has the cyclotrode. We have no idea as to his identity. Have you any plans? None that look very promising. But I did receive an anonymous phone call asking me to pick up a message about the Crimson Ghost this afternoon. Oh. <clears throat> well, are you going to do it? Why, yes, of course. Gentlemen, that's all the information I have for now. Well, well, at least that's something to work on. Diana, I'd like you to drive me. Certainly, Professor, whenever you're ready. about? Just a little scheme to prove my theory that information about my plans and movements leaks from the conference room and reaches the Crimson Ghost. I've planted an envelope up in the hills. We're going out to get it. I'm hoping some of the ghost crowd will get the news and try to follow us. So that's it. Let's go. is trailing us. Make the next left turn and head for Pelton Road. Are they still with us? Yes. It looks as though my hunch was right. Turning on. Slow down a little and follow. You hide behind the tree and cover me in case they try to rush us. Okay. to get that letter. I'll run him down and you grab it. Right. away, so our trip here was useless. Oh, no. We've definitely proved that the Crimson Ghost gets his information through some leak in the conference room. Which doesn't help unless you can find the leak. I think I can. After everyone leaves tonight, meet me in the conference room and I'll show you. Will you get the car?
so I decided the only place to keep the heavy water was right here in our own vault. This bottle contains the entire supply from the chemical house. No one will think of looking for it here. And besides, only members of our own group know the combination of the safe.
welcome back. Did you miss me? <laughs> I know that, dude. And now for the main feature, the creme de la creme. As far as I'm concerned, this picture's over right now. <laughs> It's a 1960 horror film entitled The Playgirls and the Vampire. It stars Lila Rocco, Walter Brandy, Maria Giovanni, and Alfredo Rizzo. Mamma mia, that's a spicy meatball! Tell me about it. A troop of European exotic dancers and their bumbling manager stumble upon a castle after being caught in a storm. No! The castle is inhabited by Count Gabor, his assistant, and a vampire. Count! No, you're not in this. <laughs> There's little refuge for the traveling showgirls as they slowly fall under the spell of the undead demon. Yeah, baby! <laughs> <laughs> so with that, let's get this crappy... I mean, classy movie going. Right. And let's watch The Playgirls and the Vampire.
Are you sure Frank knows where he's going? This is the first time we've ever been around here. We ought to be near the river by now. The mate at the hotel gave us directions. Well, then, we must be in trouble. We left the hotel without paying our bill. They'd be glad if we were lost. Just how many hotels have been robbed by us, Lucas? Stop talking such nonsense. I especially gave the girl a tip when we left the hotel. A tip, Lucas? After you told us you didn't have a single cent, you went and tipped the maid. And speaking of money, Lucas, where is our salary? I'm not quite sure. I've got it. What, the money? Don't be impatient. I should never have asked. Oh, what an idea. Now listen to this. You know what I'm talking about. I know. I'm not surprised. You should know by this time that when someone says he has an idea, you see what I mean? He has an idea in mind. That means he's found a certain something. Something like an inspiration, you know? You're so bright, you just take my breath away. This is going to be the most sensational act in our review, believe me. Now pay attention, please. The curtain goes up and reveals a scene deep in the heart of the jungle. You, Vera, are wandering through the forest in desperation, worn out with fatigue. You're weak and about ready to give up. But when the bushes at the rear of the stage part, and we see something horrible. You? A gorilla, a monster, an enormous, murderous gorilla. He grabs Vera, he picks her up, and he's about to make off with her. But suddenly, Erica, Ilona, Magda, you appear on the scene dressed as wild savages. Hold on a second, just a moment. Where do I fit in? Uh, what's that? Where do I fit in? You? Uh -huh. You're the gorilla. Uh -huh. But, Lucas, the audience won't be able to look at my legs. You know they're my best feature. Everybody looks at them. I'll do anything sexual. I don't need a million dollars to do it. Right, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> oh, excuse me. Oh, I'm sorry. Is it my fault, Frank? What's wrong now? The road's blockaded. Hey, what's happened? The road's blocked by a landslide. You'd better turn around and go to the hotel back there. Oh, great. They'd be delighted to see us. And where does that road lead? I wouldn't advise you to take it. You can ask anybody. No one around here would dare to go up that road. Why not? It seems to be in good condition. It's not the road that's dangerous. You'd better turn around and go on back there. Oh, what a night. This road must lead somewhere after all, to a farm or a house or a shed of some kind. It leads to the castle of Canassi. Oh, a castle? Oh. Say, girls, did you hear that? It leads to a castle. A real castle. We're not going to let a chance like that slip by. It's decided. Full speed ahead to the castle of Canassi. Come on. Look, there's a bridge. I see it. You suppose it's strong enough to hold us? It's hard to say. But we'll know after we've tried it. Lucas! Look over there. There's a gate. Yes, that must be it. Come on, everybody. We're on foot from here on in. Just our luck, it's locked. Why didn't you shout? Somebody will come. And with this wind, I'm afraid I wouldn't be heard. They're probably all asleep at this hour anyway. Well, what do we do now? How should I know? Well, we can't stay here all night, can we? Hey, Vera. How did you know about that? I don't know. I... Somehow it just seemed natural. Natural? Come on, girls. Let's not waste any time. Follow me. Look there. Do you think they'll have a butler and everything? Don't talk nonsense. I just hope they'll have someone. It seems so deserted and spooky around here. How exciting. <laughs> oh, did you hear that? Let's go back, Lucas. Well, what's the matter with you? It's just the dogs. Look. Look at Vera. She's going ahead. She's not frightened. There's nothing to be so scared about. Now, come on, girls. Oh.
Lucas! Lucas! What's the matter? Oh, who are you, the caretaker? None of your business. You'd better get away from here. How do you like that? Nobody seems to be very friendly tonight. Is anyone in the castle? No, no one. There's no one here at all. Look, Lucas. Oh, no one there, huh? Hey, girls, come on. What is your major malfunction, Numb Nuts? Please excuse us. We don't mean to disturb you, but we were caught in the storm, and the road is blocked. We were wondering if you could put us up for the night. I can't imagine who would have told you to take the road here. We are not in the habit of receiving guests at the castle. I already told them to get out of here. You heard me now. Go on, get out of here quick. It's not for me to decide. Come in, anyway. Come on, girls. Did you hear that? Come along, come along. What a beautiful place. It's like a movie set. Hey, Lucas, look at that table, will you? Oh, I wonder if they'd let me do my high kick specialty on it. I doubt it very much. Why not? It's artistic. Wait here, please. First time I've ever been inside a real castle. This place gives me the chills. Oh, everything gives you chills. Why, you even had them when that old army colonel sent you flowers to the theater. As a matter of fact, he was a general. And nobody ever sent you flowers. What do I care about flowers? Anyway, they give me hay fever. Vera. What are you doing now? I, uh... Huh? I was just getting a cigarette. And you knew they'd be in there? Good evening. Uh, I suppose that you are Count Carnassi. I mean, the master of this establishment. I mean, we're terribly sorry to have disturbed you, but, but we were surprised by the storm and thought we might possibly... Well, perhaps you'd like refreshment before resuming your voyage. I'm sure my housekeeper will be happy to help you. As a matter of fact, we thought that you might be able to put us up in your castle. Uh, the furthest hotel is pretty near. I mean, the nearest hotel from here is pretty far. That is to say, well, in brief, it's difficult to return there. We owe them some money and it... I am very sorry. It is not my custom to extend hospitality to strangers. You will have to find some other solution. No, you've no right to turn us away. It's not right. We've been on the road for hours in an uncomfortable bus. Very well. Mrs. Balish, will you prepare rooms for our guests and serve them something hot? Yes, sir. I must, however, request that you respect all the, the regulations of this castle. Once you have entered your rooms, you should not leave them for any reason, no matter what sounds you may hear. And above all, do not wander about the castle before daybreak. This is a condition which I must insist on if you want to stay here. And now, good night. Sleep well. Frank, you'd better see about the bus. All right. This way, please. Vera, wake up. You know, I don't like that housekeeper, but I must say, she knows how to make good tea. Yes, and it's good not to be worrying about having to pay the bill. Mmm, a real castle. Just imagine, Lona. So refined and elegant. Wait till I tell everyone back home. What's so exciting about an old castle like this? It's nothing but a museum. There you go, complaining. We might have spent the whole night outside if we hadn't found this. Get a look at this. Look what they've got here for an ashtray. It looks like solid silver. There's something about this place I don't care for. I don't understand why we have to remain in our rooms all night. What kind of strange, mysterious character is this Count, anyway? Why don't we just make an effort and try to behave nicely for a change? We're enjoying his hospitality, and I think we might appreciate it. You're right, Vera. Try not to be more foolish than usual. As for me, I hope that this bad weather lasts as long as possible, so we can all have free food and lodging. But what if the man on the road who warned us was right about the castle? There must be something to his story. Uh, you shouldn't listen to gossip like that. 
For example, if you had experience in society, you'd be able to recognize a real gentleman. After all, aristocrats are all a little bit eccentric. If you want my opinion, the man is closely attached to the old family tradition. Oh, Frank. When you slammed on the brakes, it's because you were looking at my legs, weren't you? Don't jerk me around. It's a simple question. But you wouldn't admit it, would you? I'm not quite sure. Say, you don't think he's married, do you? Who? Uh, well, who do you suppose? The Count, naturally. You want to make advances. That really takes the prize. The Countess Katya of the French Can-Can. <laughs> Opening night at the opera, you'd be a sensation. Leave her in peace. You go out of your way to torment Katya. Yes, he picks on her because the poor kid's defenseless. You're a bunch of silly fools. Oh, I'm beginning to feel tired. Good night. Good night. Good night and sleep well, ladies. We are most highly honored to welcome you here beneath the roof of our glorious ancestors. Thank you. No! I'm sorry. I was only... Uh, good night. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. To see me? Doesn't it seem rather odd to be outside peeking through the window of a bedroom at this hour? You're probably right. Yes, my actions may seem odd, yet in spite of that, the fact is that the presence of guests in the castle of my family is such an unusual event that I may behave as though I were by myself and in solitude. Oh, I am sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. And I understand how you must feel. You still want to show me your cucumber? No, don't say that. I, uh... It's difficult for me to explain, but if I've decided to let you all stay, it's only because of you that I did so. It was only for your sake. That's surprising. You only saw me a few minutes. Why are you staring at me like that? You use your tongue prettier than a twenty-dollar horse. Don't you think that that's an excessively conventional approach for a man like you? Who are you? I'm just an ordinary girl. In any case, you may call me Vera. What brought you here? Why did you come to this castle? Where do you come from, Vera? Well, we were in a place on the other side of the hill. I don't know the name, but the road was blocked, and so... Yeah, I know, but I meant to ask about your family. Uh, tell me, Shotzi. Is it uh, true what they say about the way you people are... Gifted? Oh, it's true. You should leave here as soon as possible, Vera, before anything happens to you. The very first thing, tomorrow morning, you should plan to leave immediately after dawn. Why? What's the matter with you? Nothing. Don't ask any more questions. I beg of you to make your departure the first thing tomorrow morning, please. And now you must really excuse me. I'll see you in the morning. I hope 
the next time you want to see me, you'll come through the door. It would be so much simpler. a little. I can't seem to fall asleep. It must be the storm that's making me so nervous. What were you talking about just now? Oh, I don't mean to be curious. I was awake and I saw you from my window. Nothing in particular. You seemed upset about something. But I don't know what... I think he feels a bit lonely here. I think he's fascinating, you know? Oh, all my life I wanted to meet a guy like that. Oh, Lucas is right, I guess. When that talk, it always comes out wrong. You know, Vera, there's a shower. I think I'll go and take one. I never would have thought that a castle would have modern plumbing. <laughs> it might be wiser if you would follow instructions. Don't go too far. Oh, that's nonsense. A shower will be good for my nerves. It's a bit chilly. May I borrow your coat for a minute? Of course, take it, but do hurry. What do you think of it? Might be an idea for our next review, huh? Well, if there is a next one. I'll be right back. So long.
Katya, Erica, where are you? What's wrong with you? Why are you crying? Erica! Magda, Ilona, Vera! it happen? She must have fallen from one of the windows of the tower. Perhaps, perhaps in the dark she missed her footing. She was always too curious for her own good. Well, this is all we needed. As if we didn't have enough headaches. Why did she have to disobey orders and wander through the castle like that? She wasn't the most intelligent girl I ever met, but she was an awfully sweet girl. We must get away from here as quickly as we can. Let's leave here right now. This place has a curse on it. Don't be silly, my I duck. just can't stand it. What are we going to do? We've got to do something. Poor Katya. What happened? I'm not quite sure. She fell out of a window. She's dead. It's a most unfortunate accident. It should never have occurred. Especially since I warned you all yesterday. What we're dealing with here is a complete lack of respect for the law. Take her inside. What do you want? We ought to bury her. You keep quiet. The Count will decide that. The dead should have peace. That's enough. And see that no one ever enters the castle. I would like to tell you of my heartfelt sorrow and ask you to believe and accept the expression of my profound sympathy for what has just occurred. First of all, if you recall, I made a point of asking you to obey our regulations and to stay in your rooms no matter what happened after dark. That unfortunate girl has paid a high price for her disobedience. I just don't understand it. What don't you understand? Nothing. Nothing at all. Well, I think we ought to notify the authorities about the accident, don't you? You're quite right. But I regret to inform you, at this moment, it is quite impossible. And why is that? I just learned a short while ago that the river is rising and has carried away the bridge which leads to the highway. And as a consequence, you are practically forced to remain here under my roof. Are you saying it's impossible for us to leave here? Even if we want to? I'm afraid so. There's really nothing I can do about it. No. I don't think I can spend another night in this place. Now, let's not exaggerate. The death of Katya has given us a shock, that's all. It's Frank that we should be thinking about. Huh? Don't worry about me. We must make arrangements for her burial. That's the first thing. Then we ought to investigate her death a little further. Then, if you like, I'll go ahead and make arrangements for digging the grave. Excuse me. I'll see you all later on.
Well, I think that one of us should say a few words of farewell. For the first time in my life, I... The words have no importance, really. What counts is sentiment. After all, words are inadequate. She was good, really good. To me, she was always loyal. I remember I had a boyfriend who wanted to go out with her, and she Never said... Never mind. She was a faithful friend, a heart of gold. She'd be glad to know how we appreciated her. And every single one of us, we loved her. Yes, that's the way all of us feel. Amen. All right, girls, let's get back to the castle. Looks like it might rain any minute. Vera, aren't you coming with us? Yes, I'm coming. You know, I really had hope for this movie, the way it started out with the hand pushing open the lid to a sarcophagus and the thrilling music, but I'm still waiting. <laughs> this fucks more than anything that I've ever fucked before. Well, I wouldn't go that far. For 1960, the women are pretty hot. It's always about sex. Well, of course it is. The title says it all, The Playgirls and the Vampire. The playgirls are front and center, and the vampire, well, comes up a little short. <laughs> and with that, let's continue. Alright, let's go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Come on, Magda, put a little life into it. And you don't clump around like a mule, get a little grace. Get dead on your feet. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. moment for it. Play me a blues, will you, Frank? Hey, what are you doing? matter you don't approve I suppose you'd rather hear uh, Chopin's funeral march well. is something wrong mrs. Balch well I must say your spectacle is quite a shocking exhibition and you should be ashamed oh maybe so but the girls have been very upset as you know and this is the only way to make them stop worrying about it you can believe me I'll inform the count uh, don't bother uh, we've already gotten his permission Okay, let's go. We've got to get this number in shape. Come on, come on, girls. Come on now, get with it. 
On your toes, Erica. Margarita Canassi, one of my ancestors. She lived here and died in 1785. But it's... Yes, you're right. The resemblance is extraordinary. I noticed it when you first arrived in my castle. Was that why you wanted to know so much about me when you came last night? I'm sorry, but all questions must be submitted in writing. For the same reason I wanted you to leave here as soon as possible. I don't understand. There's something strange in your attitude towards me. Vera, I beg of you. Don't ask me any questions. Soon you will be far away and you'll forget all this. It's better that way. I can be a real serious bitch if I don't get what I want. Tell me about Margarita, please. Who was she? What do you know about her life? Her story is a very sad one. Her life was unhappy, as was her death. Vera, I... Vera, I wouldn't want you to have a false impression of me. Solitude may have had an influence on my character. I may appear strange to you, but there is one thing I want you to know. What's that? I expected you. I expected you to come to the castle one day. It's ridiculous, I know. In spite of that, whenever I looked at her portrait, I felt that Margarita was still living. Alive, living perhaps as another person, but I knew her destiny was my destiny. You sound insane. Do you realize that? I know you think that I'm mad. You should be medicated. Forgive me. No. You're wrong. No, Gabor, you're sane. I feel it. I can't explain. It's beyond me. But I just know it. All that happens here is so very strange. You waited for me so long, you say. And at the same time, you want to get rid of me. It doesn't make sense. You mustn't try to understand. You simply must believe in me. Go far away from here, for remaining will only bring you tragedy and nothing else. No, I can't believe that. There's something in you that gives me confidence and force. Well, something that no other man has inspired in me. I've lived a meaningless life, one that's made absolutely no sense at all. Touring around with second-rate company from town to town. With you, it's different. It's as if I had always known you. As if all of your features and all your gestures were familiar to me. Now listen, Vera. I implore you to have confidence in me. Go away from this castle. Don't wait to leave. The Carnassus can bring only destruction, ruin and violent death. Gabor, please. Look at this coat of arms. It belongs to our family. Look at it, Vera. A coat of arms like any other, you think. No, it's different, for this shield is marked by tragedy and with blood from generation to generation. A damned race, Vera, beyond salvation. Gabor! Vera, where are you? Coming, Lucas. Just a minute, I'll be right there. We have to rehearse the samba. All right, I'm coming.
I hope that you will forgive me. body. Get out of here. Go on. You have no business here. Zoltan, go back to your post. But he was there. I saw him with my own eyes. I told you to go back where you belong. Obey me. I want you to know that I've had enough of these strange mysteries. Katja's body's disappeared. Somebody must have removed her from her grave. There's a very logical explanation for all this. You're much too curious. I would advise you to be less curious. Otherwise, you may be sorry. Is that so? I shall speak to the Count about this tomorrow. You may do as you wish. Good night. Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Uh, what have we got for breakfast this morning? Tea and crumpets, Lucas. Ah. Crumpets? What crumpets? There aren't any left, are there, Frank? I see. You're not on the beach, you know. You might at least dress for breakfast. Oh. And your comedy with the crumpets. Very funny, very. I'm getting in the habit of eating again. He's right. It won't be long before we're back on bread and stale salami. We have more serious matters to think about. There's something weird going on around here. Yes, yeah, your behavior. You're wrong not to take it seriously. Have you already forgotten about Katya? If you want any crumpets, all you have to do is ask. From her, she takes my appetite away. Yes, she certainly is depressing. I thought she'd burst into tears when she served us. Morning, everybody. Where can I find the Count? I must speak with him at once. Well, we're just a little buttercup, aren't we? I'm sorry, I must see him. Just a minute. If Vera wants to speak with the Count, she must have a good reason. And I assure you, you won't prevent her. And now, would you mind bringing me a few more crumpets, please? Gabor?
Gabor? Gabor, where are you? Strange things do happen in our lives, things which are beyond our knowledge. Even if we try, it's impossible for us to understand. Things which go beyond our limitations and which we hesitate even to speak of to others. But Gabor... Listen to me, Vera. I would have preferred not to tell you of these horrid things, but we cannot always do as we wish. And I shall do all I can to make the truth less painful for you. But you must promise not to repeat a word of this to a soul, not to a single person. Will you give me your promise? I promise you, Gabor. I have great confidence in you, but I simply have to be told the truth. I appreciate that. When you found the body of poor Katya, it must have been a severe shock for you. I should tell you I am the one who disinterred the body. It's difficult to say this, but I'm afraid that your friend's death was not just an accident. What do you mean? You'll have to remain calm. I know you're a brave girl, Vera. Please don't make this any more difficult than it already is for me. I'll try not to, Gabor. Please go on. Vera, the human race is afflicted with many evils and vices, and certain of these have never been understood, even by the greatest scientists. Of these, some are so ghastly and horrible that the average human mind refuses to believe that they exist and rejects them as only superstitions. And it is for this reason that for years, I have been carrying on research on one of the most terrifying of these evils. But what is it? An affliction which has hovered over mankind for generations, an evil unlike any other. It makes monsters out of men. A diabolical force giving men an insatiable thirst for human blood. It's a malady that lends force to monsters who are immortal and who take the blood from their prey. And what about Katya? She did not fall from the tower, if that is what you thought. Somebody murdered her. But why? It was the first time she came here. She meant no harm. Perhaps she was the victim of a misunderstanding. It may be because of the coat she was wearing. She was wearing my coat. I know that. You see, I was right to ask you not to wander about the castle during the night. This is terrible. I simply don't understand. Why is it me? Vera, don't ask me to explain it all to you. It's a long story, and I've been engaged for years in a desperate struggle against obscure forces of evil. And meeting you has given me new encouragement. Your mere presence here has finally granted me the inspiration I was seeking and renewed energies, Vera. With your aid, I am sure to succeed. If you stand with me and if you will help me to, Vera. But, Gabor, what can I do? Believe in me. The strength of love is miraculous if you trust it. You must believe what I say and, above all, repeat nothing to anybody. And you must tell nobody what I've just said. It would only make things more difficult. I 
I think that you're completely sincere, Gabor. I'm sure of it. I shall do as you ask me to. I just hope that I can help you and be of assistance to you. Only, don't run away from me again, as you did when you met me last night, outside in the garden. Last night? Certainly, Gabor. Don't you remember when I discovered the open grave of Katya? Oh, no more Yankee, my wanky. But, Gabor, I don't understand. The Donga need food. During the day, you are not in any danger. I swear it to you, Vera. But when night begins to fall on the towers of the castle, beware of the great danger. Do not open your door to anybody, to nobody, not even to me. I beg of you, not even if you hear my own voice. What are you trying to say? I beg you, Vera, say you'll promise me. Very well, Gabor. I trust you. Good night. someone go look for him. He only went to look for him. That was five minutes ago. Hey, Lucas. You know, this is real French cognac. Uh-huh. I've got a funny feeling that when we leave here, there won't be a drop of liquor left. What are you trying to insinuate? I am not insinuating anything. It's a fact, that's all. Frank has disappeared. He's disappeared. You're not up on the stage. Don't over-dramatize like that. Did you look to see if he's upstairs? He's not in his room and not in any of the other rooms either. He's not anywhere in the castle. He must have gone out for a walk, that's all. Don't worry, he'll turn up. No. There's our ghost. What did I tell you? Oh, Frank, it's about time. We look for you everywhere. Where were you? I went out to take a look at the uh, river. It's true. The bridge is destroyed. The water is rising. The whole region's flooded. Well, I think we could do worse than be here. If you think that, you're the only one who does. I talked with the folks around here. Really? I thought this place was deserted. They told me strange things about this castle. Oh, the castle again. This is getting repetitious. I know. It sounds like nonsense. But facts speak for themselves. What do you mean? What facts? A young girl disappeared not very long ago. Her people come from near here. They found her body lying in a field not far from the river. She was dead. People say there are strange things going on in this castle. They speak of a, a monster who goes wandering in search of victims. Oh, really? I've never believed in such stories. They're for babies. You're trying to frighten us with this stupid gossip. I'm not a superstitious person, but there's a reason why everyone's afraid there must be something to it all. Katya did not die by accident. Someone pushed her, and I'm convinced of it. You probably think that I'm out of my mind, but I assure you there's a murderer in this castle. <laughs> all right, but I'm sure I'm right, and I've sworn to get to the bottom of this mystery. Perhaps I am wrong, but something tells me we haven't seen the end of all this. Something is going to happen. I feel certain of it. <laughs> Who knows what evil lurks in the hearts of men? <laughs>
you staring at me like that, Lucas? You always liked me at least you said so. <laughs> I've come here to see you tonight because I want to be near to you. I was always unfriendly to you. Somehow you never used to be attractive to me. <laughs> now I'm here, Lucas. Talk to me as before. Tell me you want me. Tell me you want me, Lucas. Come, Lucas. Tell me you want me. Who screamed? It was Lucas. I recognized his voice. Lucas! 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 Uh, but, Wake what? up! But, uh, what is it? What? Well, he must have had a nightmare. All that screaming for nothing. Uh, it was not a nightmare. It was true. What's wrong? Now, come on, Lucas. You're acting like a baby. Tell us just what happened. Uh, oh, uh, Katya, uh, I mean, Are I you saw a stand right in front of me. Oh, no. Don't tell me you're dreaming about ghosts now, Lucas. I'm going back to bed. Take a pill, Lucas. You'll feel much better tomorrow morning. You'll see. Good night. You're right. I guess I had a bad dream, Frank. Uh-huh. Bad dream. No. The Count has asked me to inform you that the road is clear and the river can be crossed now. There is another bridge. You may leave when you wish. Will I see the Count before I go? Yes, I think so. This film was originally released in Italy in 1960 under the title The Vampire's Final Prey. Damn right. Richard Gordon, a producer and distributor of low budget horror and science fiction films, well that explains a lot, <laughs> purchased up the English language rights of the original film. He did a rush dubbing job and retitled it The Plague Girls and the Vampire. It was released on July 4th of 1963 as an adult film. Cool. <laughs> so with that, let's finish the movie, and I'll see you at the end. Oh, 
I'm touching myself tonight. Nothing to fear. Where am I? Come now, don't be upset. I want to go away. Well, isn't that special? For the moment, you must rest. You've been screaming and tossing all night. What did you say? You've had a very high fever. 
You were delirious all night long. All night long? But, but I... I don't know what you were talking about. About a monster, something like that. You must have a very vivid imagination. You really must rest. Did you say I'd been in bed ever since yesterday? Why, yes. I haven't left you for a second. I was at your side all night long. It's all so strange and frightening. Where is Lucas? And where are all the others? Outside. They got up early and went for a little walk. They should be back soon, don't worry. Now you must really rest. I'll bring you tea later. I wish I had a quarter punter with cheese every time I heard that. I don't want her here with us. I won't let you have her. Let her go. She doesn't belong here. Obey me, do you hear? Take care of Gabor and be quick about it. And that was without even a single drop of rum. What do you want now? Send her away. No, you will never replace her because she's mine. I have waited for her for years, do you understand? I have waited for her ever since death robbed me of her. not your wife. 
Margarita is dead, and she will never return. For I have replaced her. No, go away, do you hear me? Get out of here. You've no right to meddle in affairs which don't concern you. No one can take her from me. I shall make her immortal. I'll stop you, for I shall kill her. I've had enough. <laughs> you hidden Vera. It's none of your business. Go away. Listen to me. You think that she belongs to you and you have no right to think so. What you say is meaningless and idiotic, Gabor. You're incapable of understanding. It is she. I know her. I shall give her immortality. She belongs here with me. Go away, Gabor, if you value your life. You mustn't be foolish. You will destroy all my years of effort and research. Listen to me. I can give you the peace you have searched for for so many years. I tell you, I have found the formula I was looking for. It's only a question of days. Do you understand? No, your stupid hopes do not interest me at all. Nothing which is mortal is able to interest me now. Our two existences have nothing in common, Gabor. You lead a life which is trivial and has no meaning for you or for others. You are ignorant of our sublime truths. But I am able to save you if you let me. Save me from what danger? From something you vulgarly believe is a serious malady. It's a magnificent achievement of the intellect and the greatest joy known to mankind. So now, go away. I've listened to you too much. Don't you dare touch her. I shall prevent you with all the strength of my being. You asked for it, Gabor. <laughs> Anyone can have bad breath, but you could knock a buzzard off a shit wagon. Are you all right, Master? You need no longer worry about me, Zoltan. It's all finished now. I'm glad, Master. Glad for you and for the young lady. Mrs. Balch. 
Everything is all right now. I would like to ask you to look after Vera. Yes, of course, I shall be glad to. Drink this, it will make you feel better. Calm yourself, Vera. You mustn't be afraid. Because, you see, he's dead now. I knew the day had come. It was bound to happen sooner or later. I have prayed each night for years. My prayers were answered. And happiness has returned. Few realize the great force of true faith. But the most powerful weapon against evil is prayer. So you knew even from the beginning? Certainly. And believe me, life was difficult. For Count Gabor was faced with a terrible moral decision. For years, he devoted all his strength to research and experimentation. And he had found a method by which he could make the curse disappear forever. But he did not have the courage to pierce the heart of a member of his family, even though he wasn't human because the Count would have considered it a crime to kill him. He couldn't make up his mind to do it. I feel sorry for him. To think I even suspected him. Yes, I know. And my own position was a difficult one, as I told you. I always had to keep an eye on Zoltan and prevent him from entering the castle. The poor fellow. He had such affection for the Count that he swore he would take justice in his own hands. He would have killed the monster. Well, how do you feel now? Better, thank you. So, what are you waiting for? What do you mean? A purveyor of pulchritude. A one woman Sodom and Gomorrah, if you will. A slimy, slithering succubus. A concubine, a streetwalker, a tramp, a slut, a cheap whore! Terribly lonely and he needs someone. Someone who will help him forget. He loves you, Vera. Didn't you know that? You really are a silly girl. <laughs> I don't know why I'm wasting my time with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sultan. I still have a few matters to attend to here in the castle. And then I plan to sell it. Afterwards, I shall join you. Wait for me, Vera. Wait for me.
there you have it. The human count killed the vampire count. Question is, were there really two counts or one? <laughs> I don't know. I lost count. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed it. This is the coolest thing I have ever seen. Yeah, right. And as always, from the wonderful town of Huber Heights, this town needs an enemy. This is Mr. Molto saying, peace. Oh. Mm.